Hey guys, it's Kaven from Shoot Champion Gaming and believe it or not, we actually have another water deck profile for you. So water is finally feeling like it has some uh, more creativity, a little bit more options to go with. Uh, before it felt pretty limited. So we've been having a blast making all these different water decks. And the one that I have today, I actually brought to a locals, which had like 12 people, I think. And our locals is actually pretty hard. Uh, there's a lot of really good players there and it almost took down the whole thing. I lost in the final round, uh, in the in the finals match or whatever, the undefeateds. Um, but yeah, I've made a couple of adjustments to the list since then. And this is a pretty well-tested list. Uh, I played it before locals as well in, into some other matchups and I actually think it's like pretty decent. Uh, it's definitely far from tier one. It's a little inconsistent. Uh, it is a self mill package, so, but it can absolutely win at locals and it, uh, it's a really, really fun deck to play. So let's go ahead and get into the material deck. So we have the fragmented spirit of water. It's crazy important to get some specific cards in your hand. Uh, to start with this deck and so we need to go with the fragmented spirit and fragmented spirit just feels really good in water specifically because it feels like a lot of the things that you do in the, your early turns don't require a seven card hand so especially in this deck I'll even go over some simple lines to start off the game uh, to start maximizing your value so we definitely go the fragmented spirit you get to level three eventually and you get to pop the spirit shard and draw an extra card so you'll get seven cards eventually we have level one Xander, really important. The glimpse is so helpful. Uh, you'll usually have a fractal rain out by the time that you go level one Xander. So you can glimpse two, you can put a floating memory on top of the deck and then either bottom deck the other one or if it's a card you want to draw that turn, keep it on the top and then you'll mill that top card in your recollection phase shortly after going to Xander with the fractal of rain. So it just really, really helps with the glimpse and the prep counter is pretty important too. So really, really nice champion there. Xander Deft Executioner, we self mill and we rely on Light Weaver Assaults in this deck. If you mill all your Light Weaver Assaults, you are going to lose. So what's really nice is that you can, if you mill a Light Weaver Assault early or one of your other really important cards, you can actually just pick it right back up with Deft Executioner from the graveyard with his ability. Um, and the flexibility to just get two prep counters instead actually can come up. We have another win con in the deck with that. So um, it's the perfect card for this deck. And then we have the bad Xander. We have Korhazi's Chosen, which actually fits incredibly well into this deck. So on entry, you get that prep counter, which if you do it right, your level one, your level two, and your level three will all give you prep counters on enter. And so you can very easily land with three prep counters by the time that you're level three, maybe four if you chose to get the extra one off that to Executioner, but that's really important. We'll talk about that later. You also get the Stealth and Spell Shroud. So we don't have like an insane amount of defense in this deck. And so getting that is really crucial. Also for decks like Tristan, uh, Nico, Nico just won like a bunch of regionals this past weekend at the time of recording. Um, you know, gaining that inherent stealth, not from a spell, uh, which is important against Tristan. They can't, they can't negate this stealth that you, you, uh, you get. Um, actually, well, yeah, and, and Nico can negate it with a bunch of their water negate cards. So getting that inherent stealth and spell shard is really, really nice, really good defensive. So, and we don't really like, we're not playing the normal Luxem strategy of sitting here and revealing a bunch of Luxem cards. We don't have the space for that. So this is uh, the right Xander to play for this list particularly. Next up, we have Luxura's map. This is just the freest card ever. Uh, you know, better than GCR kind of, I mean, it, it is, yeah. You get a plus one, that's it. You just get a plus one. You have to wait a turn for it, but uh, it searches you anything in the deck, which is really important in this deck particularly because you really need to see Light Weaver's Assaults. There's one other card that you might want to search out um, depending on how the game's looking, but you're 99% of the time going to go with the Light Weavers from the Luxurious map. Then we have Scepter of Lumina. This is probably one of the trickiest cards in the deck because you're not always gonna wanna go Scepter before you start leveling up. Um, sometimes this is just gonna be in here for a late materialization uh, that you just pay five and draw two cards with. Um, but sometimes you really need the damage from it as well. So this is probably the trickiest card. I would say if you're trying to play this deck, every single turn when this is in your material deck, think to yourself, should I bring this out right now? You know, like try, try to think of those lines because um, that is the most complicated card, I think. Then we have Cloak of Stillwater. This is one of our ways to run defensive options. 
Um, floating memory in our graveyard is a huge resource in this deck, and so you don't want to just like use this willy-nilly, but it can be really good at if you are just taking a little bit too much pressure in a game, bring this out, draw a card right away off of a floating memory, that can be super helpful in itself, and stay alive a little bit longer. Then we have Blinding Orb. This is a really nice card in this deck. Uh, it helps with counterplay and like I said, you know, sometimes just exchanging a floating memory for a card for a card draw is really good in this deck. So I really, really like that card. Uh, we have Assassin's Ripper. We basically, spoiler alert, we play the Slice and Dice package. So uh, if you do get two prep counters on your level two, instead of getting a card back, or if you use a D-level card and re-level, which we'll get to later, Basically, there are ways to get to more than three prep counters in this deck, and if you get to four or more, you can go Ripper plus Slice and Dice and do 15 damage to them, which if you've done damage with like Scepter of Lumina and stuff, you might be able to just win without even getting to your level three, maybe. So um, it's just in here as a flex option, flex win condition. We have Quicksilver Grail in here. GCR would be nice, honestly. Uh, this deck does kind of feel like you could change a lot of the material deck cards to just be generic draw cards instead. Get rid of Ripper, get rid of Grail, uh, you know, just put in bobbles, put in GCR, all that kind of stuff, sit there and play more defensive cards and just draw a card every turn from your material deck. But that's not the option that I went with. Um, and so I really like Quick Server Gale for the Ripper plays. You can do those early cheeky slice and dices for lethal. You can use it with Blinding Orb, not, not, not let them know what's coming and do Grail into Blinding Orb and kind of stop their counter. Uh, it, 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 just, it just works with this deck. Uh, then we have Backup Charger, of course, we have to play this where water, you can fracturize the power cell token that you bring out, and you can make Backup Charger essentially a plus two, which is just insane. This card is should be in pretty much every water deck. Uh, and then we have Mercenary's Blade. This is actually another way, if we don't value the prep counters in our game, uh, to just go remove a prep counter, materialize Mercenary's Blade, fracturize it, and then you're just going to essentially plus one. Um, which is really, really nice. Or if you just, for some reason, need that extra damage, we run Drowned Cut in here. And so going Mercenary's Blade plus a Drowned Cut is three damage, which can clear off a lot of allies and stuff. So it's a really good flex spot in there too. Okay, let's talk about the main deck. So this is our only Luxem card that we play for Lightweaver's Assaults. This is why we aren't on the Blinding Steel uh, Xander. You know, it could be nice, like revealing some Lightweaver's, doing a little bit of ping damage, but um, the Korhazi's Chosen makes a lot more sense for this deck. Essentially, the game plan of this deck is sit back, accumulate resources, and just light weavers your assault your opponent for like 20 damage. It's, uh, it's, it's really fun, honestly. Um, so yeah, this is one of your most important cards in the deck. Uh, it's pretty hard to stop, especially because Assassin also gets incapacitate now. So there's just a lot of ways to make that work. We have four Dungeon Guide. Uh, this is a little bit of a weird card. You're not gonna use this as you normally would in a Dungeon Guide deck, so just you know, try to feel out when this feels appropriate. Um, because you have so much self-mill, it's kind of just free to level up with those, but you can also banish them with the Lost and Thought for extra cards, so sometimes Dungeon Guide, just getting that extra materialization and the faster materialization is worth it, and then just recouping those resources with Lost and Thought later. We have four Sable Remnant. Uh, you're gonna notice a really heavy theme in this deck is floating memory. We have probably the highest count of floating memory in any deck you've ever seen in Grand Archive. Uh, and there's a reason for that. So we are trying to self-mill a lot. We are trying to gain all those resources. Sable is really nice because we also have Primordial Ritual, which we want targets for, so we want to sacrifice our own creatures. What better uh, creature to do that with than a two cost floating memory generic card, right? So this can help you fight for board, get a little chip damage in. It fits really perfectly into the deck. We also have four fast cure uh, because you draw six at the start instead of seven. And you're also trying to play things like fractals and stuff here and there. Um, you can get lower on influence, usually in the early to mid game. By the late game, you're going to have a lot of influence if you played the game correctly and if things go right, I guess. Um, uh, so yeah, try to use these earlier than later. Then we have three Stalwart Shield Nate. You could probably go up to four, just the space is really hard uh, to maneuver with this deck. There's not that much that you can change, but yeah, we have three Stalwart Shield Nates. Then we have three Incapacitates. Uh, again, pretty much every card in this deck needs to either be a win con card or a floating memory. Uh, and so, you know, Incapacitate helps you get your win con, so it's worth it. 
then we have three slice and dice. The really nice thing too is that incapacitate and slice and dice are both cards that you can pick back up with your level two Xander. So if you mill one really early, uh, it doesn't feel as bad and you can actually just plus basically off that. So slice and dice isn't here, like I said, just another win con. You can do 15 damage with Ripper or just nine uh, without it. Um, if you've done scepter damage and stuff, or if you pair it with a light weaver's assault in the late game or something, you can actually add some damage up really fast and uh, your opponent just might not expect it. All right, here's pretty much the most important card in the whole deck, Fractal of Rain. Uh, your games are going to go long. Uh, when I played this in locals, I went to the end of overtime in every single match. Like I literally was winning matches with three seconds left on the round timer. Um, not the round timer, the end of overtime timer. It was crazy. Um, so you're gonna have a lot of turns. And so Fractal Rain is going to consistently generate you value every single turn. This is the card that you're looking for when you are glimpsing six with your spirit. Uh, the only other one that I would really suggest looking for is Primordial Ritual. This one isn't uh, value every single turn, but it is ridiculous value in just one card. So you play one of your Floating Memory 2 drops like I showed earlier, and then Primordial Ritual as well. So it's not actually that hard to get in a starting hand because you have seven cards that you can get for an ally to sacrifice, and then you have four of this actual card itself. So it's not impossible to get a starting hand with this. Um, and because those are all two drops, you can do that with a six card hand like I was talking about. Um, so yeah, obviously just going Floating Memory Ally, Floating Memory Spell, both generic, which is really nice. Putting those in the graveyard, they've essentially replaced themselves as, as soon as you use them. And then putting two cards in the drop with how many floating memory that we have, you're most likely gonna hit floating memory with both cards actually, which is really insane. You can turn this into a plus two. It's almost always gonna be a plus one, which is really, really insane that water finally starts getting these super easy early game plus one combos like fire does and stuff. So really important card. Also with Fractal of Rain, your best opening is Glimpse six, find a Fractal of Rain, play that obviously for two. Now you have uh, three cards in hand and the Fractal that you can tap. You bring out uh, Backup Charger and you put the three cards from your hand down, make your uh, token and then pick those all back up. And uh, you, you, know, you mill with Fractal that turn and you're starting to already plus cards and get your engine going and stuff. That's your best uh, opening line. So just sharing that real quick. Then we have four Intrepid Highwayman. So this is actually a crazy card. Um, you know, people use this way back when people were trying to play Lux and Xander in DOA because it's going to retaliate for four damage. So this can clear essentially any ally. So it's just really nice to just play this out and go, yep, I'm gonna leave it up. It's an interceptor, you know, that can help with Nico and stuff like that. Um, and just say, you know, if you try to swing a Frostworn Paladin, an Ace and Protector, a Ghost of Pendragon, all these allies that are almost impossible to kill off, you're just gonna go, yep, yeet yours put mine in the graveyard, you know, you slowed your opponent's win condition down, you played defensively, and then now you also have a floating memory in the drop. It's such a good card in this list. We have four refracting missiles in here. We only have the four fractal of rains, but we also have fracturize, and most of the time you're gonna wanna fracturize your own stuff. Like I said, that mercenary's blade, that power cell that you get off backup charger, those are cards that you're not really gonna use most of the time, and so just, uh, you know, turning those into mana rocks uh, is really good, and then it makes your refracting missiles hit more. So usually this is only gonna hit for two or three, but um, you know, it can get to pretty high numbers if you're fracturizing your own stuff and if you're bringing out multiple fractals of rain. So again, it's just another one of those, those, those like tricky cards that your opponent might not expect it, but you might just go, you know, on, on level two refracting missiles for like four or five and then slice and dice for like 15 and all of a sudden they're dead and you didn't even have to play Light Weavers. Then we have four Drowned Cut. Again, we just want a bunch of really good floating memory cards. This can again be a little bit more chip damage with Scepter with this card. There's so much chip damage that you can do in this deck. It's really deceiving. Uh, and it also is a really great way to help just like clear out early, uh, early allies that they're playing, uh, low health allies that are trying to hit you. Um, it's just a free defensive card that replaces itself essentially. Four Fracture Eyes, I won't take, talk about this one for a long time. You guys know this card. Um, really good. I've already talked about how you can use it in this deck. Generic floating memory, it fits perfectly. And then our last floating memory card is the four lost in thought. So this is one card that took a while of testing before I realized you actually want to keep this in your opening hand if you see it. So the this is a really, really important mulligan deck. 
um, you're going or glimpse deck I should say you're going to have to really learn how to glimpse correctly with this deck because that is honestly maybe going to be the difference between you winning and losing I'm usually bottom decking five cards every single time I glimpse because the only cards that you really want to see is fractal of rain is the absolute most important one to see like I said, Lost in Thought, or no, sorry, not Lost in Thought, Primordial Ritual is a really important one too. Because you have so many targets, you also have the Intrepid Highwaymans and such. Um, you know, you, you're just, you're gonna be able to use that card at some point in the game, and it just generates you so much value. But Lost in Thought is really important. This is how you're going to get just an overwhelming amount of influence over your opponent and do those like Light Weaver's Assault for 20. Um, in the finals of Locals, which I somehow lost, uh, I lost in thought two out of the three games for eight cards pre-rec. Uh, so it was just insane. You get so much value out of that card. So then we have four Shroud and Mist. This was in my sideboard when I played at Locals. Um, you know, and in testing, it was like hit or miss on if I want it in the main or side. I've decided that this is better in the main. Um, really, really good card here. Again, it's another card that you can pick up off of your level two. So you can even use this on level one and then go to level two, reuse it again, uh, like how Luxum Xander from the previous formats have used their like vanishes and stuff. Um, or if you mill one, you can pick it up there too. Uh, giving your champion stealth is really, really good in this meta with the Tristan and the Nico and the wind allies and all that other kind of stuff going around. And uh, pairing this with your level three, you can just really chain turns of stealth back to back. And because of that, we are trying out the Innervate Knowledge. This is probably like the, the least tested card in the list, um, but I do think in theory it's pretty good. Definitely try it out if you don't like it. That's probably the biggest flex spot in the deck, um, but you know, getting that inherent stealth, like I said earlier, is really nice. It also is the only way to really get extra prep counters in the deck because you can D-level from three, two, or one and get another prep counter when you level up. Um, but yeah, so just a cool, cool card right there. Let's talk about the side deck now. We'll, we'll, we'll end it out. I know this is probably a little bit longer of a video, but this is a unique deck and kind of tricky to play, honestly. Uh, we have two Excalibur. This is just your generic good Luxem card destroys pretty much anything in the game. So I think it's just a good flex card to have in the sideboard. Really good against like Merlin and stuff to kill off Incarnates. Uh, we have one more Incapacitate if you're against a matchup that really relies on a lot of spells like Merlin and stuff. Uh, we have two Resolute Sands in case you just need more defense. And then we have four Reprograms. So uh, Floating Memory is obviously like super important in this deck. If you're going against something like a Wind Automaton Allies that doesn't really run a lot of spells, take out your Incapacitates, put in Reprograms, and now you've made your chances at milling Floating Memory even better, and you have more applicable cards for that matchup too. So four Reprogram is a no-brainer for the sideboard of this deck. Then we have three Frostbind. Uh, again, if you're in that matchup where like Incapacitate just isn't that good, maybe it's Allies or something like that, you can swap out the three Incapacitate from the main for three Frostborns in the side, or Frostbinds in the side, and then that way you have a little bit better of a negate card for that matchup. Uh, and then we have three Song of Frost, which, um, you know, like I said, the deck space is just super tight. You really want to have basically either a Win Con or a Floating Memory card in your deck. And so we don't have any Song of Frost mained, but it is obviously a very important card for the sideboard for specific matchups that just go really, really big attacks. So that's it, guys. I know I keep saying this, but like, I really, really love this deck. It's been so much fun to play. It was a lot of fun to even deck build. I just think that we're in a fantastic time of Grand Archive right now where so many cards and ideas and strategies are just possible. Even if it's not, you know, the tier one, top eight ascent level deck, there's so many decks that can take down a locals, maybe take down a store champs, maybe top eight of regionals and stuff, you know? So um, I do think that, that this is around that level of strength. Uh, you know, you just need to get a little lucky with your mills, of course, and your mulligans and everything. But, um, you know, yeah, it's it's been so fun to deck build and play Grand Archive right now. If you're a newer player, I hope that, uh, you know, you see all the excitement and just see how great this game is. If you're an old player, uh, you know, I hope that you're having a great time in Grand Archive right now. And, uh, you know, Grand Archive's been doing well for quite a while, um, but it's just so exciting to see uh, how good this meta is and, and just how good this game is. So thank you guys all so much. We'll catch you on the next video. Peace.